Hello and welcome to the Daily Post on this 27th of March. We have some scriptures and some thoughts and ideas for you today that we hope you'll find helpful during the day. The first scripture comes from Psalm 110 at verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, we move into the book of Judges, chapters 1, 2 and 3, and in Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 to 30. <coughs> the thoughts of the day. Enthusiasm releases the drive to carry you over obstacles and adds significance to all that you do. If not us, who? If not now, when? Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. The uh, motivational thought for the day, do it now. You become successful the moment you start moving towards a worthwhile goal. On this day, on this day in 1790, the modern shoelace with an eyelet was patented in England by Harvey Kennedy. And in 1855, Canadian geologist Abraham Gesner patented kerosene on this day. In 1914, the first successful blood transfusion was performed in a hospital in Brussels. And in 1964, the Great Alaska Earthquake a 9.2 magnitude earthquake and resulting tsunami killed 139 people in the largest US earthquake and the second largest ever recorded. In 1977 on this day, a bad day for uh, air travel too, jumbo jets collided on the ground in a foggy uh, atmosphere at Tenerife Airport and 574 people were killed. And in 1980, Mount St. Helens became active after 123 years and Mount St. Helens made up for it. Personal story of the day. Problems are real and so are the answers. Prayer times can get you down. No matter how much you look forward to gathering with friends to pray, the requests can be disheartening. A long time pastor is having health problems. A child has cancer. A couple from your house meeting are getting a divorce. The overseas work is struggling for money and you have struggles of your own. The more requests you hear, the more weary you can sometimes grow. However, we're reminded that a faithful man deals with disappointments through prayer. With confidence, he thanks God for his absolute control over all things. With tears, he pleads with God to work in the lives of those for whom prayer is requested. With honesty, he acknowledges that we don't always understand what God is doing. Like the psalmist, he turns a time of complaining over man's problems into a time of praising God for his listening ear. Prayer turns to praise because one saint believes that the Lord hears, as we read in Psalm 102 and verse 17, he will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Are you struggling with difficulties in your own life or the overwhelming problems of dear friends and loved ones? Learn to hand them over to the everlasting God. That's how to drive away those prayer time doubts and fears. The devotional thoughts of the day, the first, full of faith, fear and courage. The scripture from Mark chapter 14 and verse 36, references from Mark 14 verses 32 to 50. Not what I will, but what thou wilt. 
The Garden of Gethsemane marked an intense spiritual struggle in the life of Jesus. We spoke yesterday of Jesus' humble submission and today we see that this attitude was in effect not only in the good times but also and especially in the tough times. Under great pressure, on the brink of suffering and death, Jesus continued to choose submission to his Father's will. The bottom line never changed. Jesus was human though, and the struggle was very real. He was not serene or untouchable as some paintings show him. He felt mental anguish. The text says deeply distressed and troubled. Two verbs that in Greek powerfully and even shockingly reveal amazement, fear and awe. See verse 33. The thought of being separated from his father and bearing the responsibility of the sin of the entire world was almost too much, he told his disciples in Mark 14 verse 34. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Or in modern language, he said, my heart is ready to break with grief. In addition, his friends were too sleepy to watch and pray. He knew one would, would, would betray him, invading the favourite place in which he was even when praying, as we read in John 18, verse 2. He understood that his torture, humiliation and death were very near. No wonder he cried, take this cup from me. But in the end, his last word was, yet not what I will, but what, we, but what you will. Verse 36. Though about to drink from the cup of God's righteous wrath against sin, Jesus had a faithful commitment to doing God's will. And of course, so should we. Praise the Lord. The second thought, embrace of God. The scripture from Psalm 103 and verse 13. As a father pities his children. God is not only almighty, he is also a compassionate father, abounding in grace. His warm and comforting embrace is for all of his children. It does not matter how old we are or how clever we are. Thank goodness for that. It does not matter how scared or rejected we feel. We all need a father's loving embrace. In our father's arms, we can let our tears flow. We find comfort there. There we can rest and find new strength. When a little child crawls up in his father's lap, the important thing is not the achievement, it is the relationship. The father's lap is not a judgment seat. The father does not gaze accusingly at the little fellow snuggled in his arms. No, it's the relationship, the fellowship and the love that matter now. Work can wait. Assignments are put aside. The battle is far away. The eyes of the child are lost in the father's. As his arms carefully, calmly and lovingly embrace the child's little body, the child feels loving, comfort and power flow from his father's arms directly into his innermost being. And there they sit, and time stands still. A wee bit of eternity right now. Nothing is more important, nothing is more precious. No one says anything, they just sit there. The child's worried soul has been stilled, and the father securely, decidedly, and awesomely encircles the child's entire life. They breathe rhythmically, and grace flows, ever-increasing grace. The child waits and listens in silence. The father lets his grace flow forth, and life brings life. Thus the reservoirs of spirit, soul, and body are replenished, and once the storm has been stilled, and the need met, new visions, new days, new challenges, and new adventures spring to life. Praise the Lord and thank him for his grace. The facts of the day. Phobos, 
one of the moons of Mars is so close to its parent planet that it could not be seen by an observer standing at either of Mars' poles. Phobos, very busy, makes three complete orbits around Mars every day. In 1894, A.G. Spaulding and Brothers in Chicopee, Massachusetts, invented the first official basketball. The first balls were made of panels of leather that were stitched together over a rubber bladder. The closing thought for the day, and one that uh, should exercise our minds during the day, whose love abounds when others fail? The answer? John 15 and verse 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And think about that through the day. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that we'll see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, we hope today's post will be helpful and uplifting to you, and we hope that you'll have a blessed day. Bye for now.